Joining us on the line right now is investigative journalist uh, Cheryl Atkinson, author of, the, of a new book that's coming out called Stonewalled, My Fight for Truth Against the Forces of Obstruction, Intimidation, and Harassment in Obama's Washington. Sounds like a, a barn burner there. Paige Turner can't wait for that, Cheryl. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. We, we wanted to have you on because you've done some reporting. Uh, about the, the these unaccompanied minors that are coming uh, across the border illegally and being sent around the country. And as you went to find out some information ab about where these kids are being sent, you found out that the government isn't answering a lot of questions. Give us the background. Well, it started when I was on Capitol Hill discussing some of this with members of Congress, and I learned that members of Congress can't get answers from federal agencies as to what's happening uh, where some of these children are being placed. And mind you, they're not looking for personal information about the kids, which is the basis on which uh, Health and Human Services is denying the information request. They're simply saying, are any of these headed to my community? We need to know how to prepare for them. The community needs to have some say-so in what happens and what types of facilities they're being held in. And Congress says we need to do oversight on some of the contracts that are going out to pay for this. But the answer to all of those questions was pretty much a talk to the palm, you know, from the government. So I went and asked some of the same questions, and I got the same answers. They won't even engage in a discussion on where the locations of the children are. Well, is, is, it, have to, is it truly a privacy issue, or is it just an uncomfortable thing that they don't want to talk about? I think it's more so that they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to see protests in other towns uh, the way some of them have had citizens come out and say that they don't want the children housed in inappropriate facilities or groups of them there. Um, I think they're trying to avoid publicity. There is no privacy issue um, with saying where a location of groups are. After all, they told us when they were at these military installations, there would be a privacy issue perhaps with you know, giving names and personal information, but that's not what anybody's asking for. I think it's pretty outrageous that a federal agency is spending tax dollars and conducting the public business on a matter of such importance and refusing to tell even Congress what it's doing. Well, exactly, and that's uh, my next question. Who in Congress is taking up this issue? Because their job is to uh, perform oversight over the people's money and how it's being spent, and they can't really perform that oversight if they don't know where the money is going and how much of it needs to be going. Well, one of them that's been asking a lot of questions and follow-up letters, although sometimes the letters go unanswered, these days when Congress asks the administration something or federal agencies, many times they tell me they just don't bother to answer anymore, especially if they're in the minority. Maybe the Republicans on the House side and Democrats on either side could get an answer, but certainly Republicans on the Senate side, where they're in the minority, have gotten used to the idea that they just may never hear back on a deadline or a question. But Senator Charles Grassley is one of the ones trying to conduct oversight, for example, he looked at a contract um, he found out about for a nonprofit that was supposedly going to get $50 million tax dollars to convert a Texas hotel into housing. The cost, Grassley said in a letter to HHS, worked out to 166000 tax dollars per year per child wow. for this project. So he asked HHS, is this true? We need to conduct oversight. You need to provide answers to questions. And he recently, at last word, had written a follow-up letter saying, you haven't answered any of my questions. So um, they're just not having any luck. Well, we heard the same thing from Virginia Delegate Tim Hugo earlier in this program today. He says that, you know, the Commonwealth of Virginia is number five on the list of, uh, of states that have received a large number of these unaccompanied minors. And we know that they're in school systems, but we can't be told where. We know it's going to cost millions of dollars more to take on these kids, but we can't get answers about where they are and where the money's going to come from. It seems like these are sort of basic questions that at least the elected officials ought to be able to get, if not the public. What I don't understand is, in, in my re research and background as a journalist, I believe it's unlawful to keep public information, and I believe this is public information, from release. And I don't understand why uh, the media is not demanding it and why members of Congress aren't demanding it using whatever they have to, you know, almost be on their doorstep and say we're entitled to this information today. Virginia not only has a large number of where they've been placed, but they also have a large number of those who've already been released to sponsors. We do have those numbers. And Virginia has something like closing in on 3,000 children that have been released to family members or sponsors. That doesn't count those in temporary shelters. So, 
Yeah, Texas has over 5,000 we know of that have already been released to sponsors in addition to those being held in shelters. New York, more than 4,000. The numbers are not insignificant. Uh, Cheryl Atkinson, I, you, you alluded a little bit earlier there to maybe the motives as to why they want to keep this information uh, quiet. And, you know, I, I think about those protests that we saw in Riverside County, California, people coming out and trying to stop the HHS buses there from coming into their community. Is, is that sort of the sense that you're getting here is that they don't want any sort of public display uh, against these children? I'm sure that's part of it. If they feel they, that people know where they are, they're afraid there will be other protests. But uh, in America, one is not allowed to, based on the prediction of something that might happen that they don't like or some sort of uh, speech issue that they don't like may occur, they're not allowed to preemptively withhold uh, public information or take action on the basis of what they predict might happen. If that were the case, the government really wouldn't have to tell us anything about you know, anything that they yeah. get right. Well, and this is sort of uh, you know the the theme of your fourth your fourth forthcoming book, Stonewalled, because you got the IRS out there. For example, we've been trying to get answers there. Congress asked questions. Congress asked questions. Where are the emails? We're told they don't exist, and it is only when they get before a judge, and and the, and the and the, the the government has to answer questions before a judge under oath that we get the truth that indeed apparently these emails do exist. How is it that Congress can be ignored uh, when they ask questions? They are our elected officials. I think because they have, much like the news media, relinquished uh, you know, the oversight duties that they have to some degree. Not all of them. I'm not trying to paint every single one of them the same way. But by and large, they, they have come to accept, even if they don't like it, that this happens. They're not taking any action when it happens. They sort of throw their hands up in the air and say, isn't that terrible? That's the way it is, instead of uh, doing something about it. And they certainly could do something about it, but nobody's really pushing uh, Cheryl Atkinson, before we lose you, I, I don't know if you saw the story that uh, Bill Gertz broke yesterday about these 11 airliners out of Libya. Did you see that story? I did. I did. Yeah, and I know that you're intimately familiar with the turmoil in Libya and uh, everything that came down with Benghazi. When you see that story, I mean, this is just sort of adding to the mess of that country. I, I, I'd love for your, your reaction to it. Well, I don't, I'm not terribly surprised. I'm horrified, but not terribly surprised. And I think that too often we have looked at what's happened, um, and I'm not an expert, but I have spoken to some people, you know, in the government who are and outside the government. So I'll just reflect some of that with my own thoughts. But too often we have viewed what's going on in other parts of the world, country by country. Oh, this happened in Libya. Look what's happening in Syria. And until very recently, there's been little discussion about how it all interconnects. And I remember after Arab Spring was going so horribly wrong. Um, I really thought there was a story to do that tied in what's happening in the region, the spread of al-Qaeda's official presence in additional countries, even at a time when Obama had falsely declared it was on the run. By his own uh, counterterrorism experts' accounts, it was never on the run. So um, you know, the whole region is in trouble. I think that's something that um, is a really serious concern, yeah. and I'm not yeah. certainly surprised what happened in Libya. I don't know how we could have and should have been keeping a closer eye on that or if there was a way to do so. Th that's the story, it, yeah. yeah. It just seems like we should have known that. A uh, very good point. It, it's a problem that is not confined by lines on a map. No, not at yeah. all. Cheryl Atkinson, uh, very uh, good to have you on the show. Again, the name of your book, which is, uh, or you can order it now. Oh, good. S Stonewall, my, flight for, my Fight for Truth Against the Forces of Obstruction, Intimidation, and Harassment in Obama's Washington. Can't wait. Yeah, thanks, thanks Cheryl. Thanks for having me. Okay.